Today I've got some Ryzen 5-ish gaming benchmarks. Stay tuned. As some of you may know, Ryzen 5 is literally the same chip as Ryzen 7's with simply two or four cores disabled depending on the model you go with. Either way, it does retain the two CCX modules of the Ryzen 7 chips. So, TechSpot has done a pretty great set of benchmarks simulating what the 1600X and 1500X should look like in gaming. They even looked at a few different graphics cards as well. I'm not going to show all those benchmarks, so definitely check out the article for more information, which I'll have linked in the description. Okay, so part of me is kind of debating on what I should call this. Should I call it Ryzen 5 Gaming Benchmarks or something more along the lines of Ryzen 5-ish? I definitely don't want to seem clickbaity, but this should give us quite an accurate view of what we'll be seeing with Ryzen 5. Even the cache will be the same, as both the 1600X and 1500X have the same 16 megabytes of cache as Ryzen 7. Of course, I can't definitely say it will be identical. Either way, let's get into the system specs before moving to the benchmarks. The most important aspect of this system is the core clocks. They ran every Ryzen processor on 4 GHz, which is a reasonable overclock. They also ran every Intel at 4.8 GHz, also a decent overclock for Intel. It is a smart move as Intel does have the higher clocks, and it wouldn't be fair to clock them the same unless comparing nothing but the architectural differences. The Ryzen test was running 16 GB 3000 RAM, and the Intel was on 32 GB of 3000 RAM. They ran the frame rates at 1080 and used a wide range of GPUs, which actually brings up an interesting result that I'll talk about later. The 1080 Ti, 1070, and 1060 were the graphics cards used. As I go through these, definitely note that there were only 6 games benchmarked. Simply put, that isn't enough of a sample size to formulate significant conclusions given the data, but of course, we can still talk about it. The first game is one that's always been bad for Ryzen, Far Cry Primal. As we move to the 1070, the CPU becomes less of an issue. Of course, it's pretty obvious Far Cry Primal just isn't well optimized to work with Ryzen, and TechSpot noted that they see about a 15% boost in performance when disabling SMT. Next up is Mafia 3. As you can see, the 1800X and essentially the virtual 1600X beat out the i5 with the 1500X lagging almost in the margin of error behind. One strange phenomenon is that the i5 dips dramatically in minimum FPS. I have heard rumors that Ryzen is more smooth to play in some instances, even if the average FPS is higher. This definitely looks to be true when comparing the i5 here, though note that Far Cry Primal has Intel with better lowers. Even more weird still, when they use the 1070, the 1800X and 1600X beat out all of Intel's models in both average and minimum FPS. It is only by a few FPS, so it could just be a margin of error since it makes sense for Ryzen to move up, but to surpass it doesn't, as the reason Ryzen moved up should be that the GPU became the bottleneck. So I don't know, that's a weird one there. Next up is For Honor, and with it being such a GPU-bound game, all CPUs were tied, even as high as using the 1080 Ti. When moving over to F1, we see the 1800X and 1600X beat out the i5, while the 1500X ties it and the 7700X beating them both. The thing to look at again is the minimum FPS of the i5 compared to the 1500X. It's, it's a little weird, I don't know. Next is Battlefield 1, and you can see Ryzen is losing out to all but the i3, yet once again, look at the minimums, it dips a good bit more on the i5. Lastly is Ghost Recon, which shows even the i5 beating all of Ryzen's contenders. So what do we take away here? Well, it seems to be a mixed bag when comparing the i5 to Ryzen, but the 7700K is definitely still quite dominant. There's really just one thing I think is strange with the benchmarks. The only difference between the i5 and i7 is SMT. Well, that in cache size, but I doubt that would make such a drastic difference in gaming. Pretty much every game saw quite a bit of benefit from Intel's hyper-threading, while Ryzen tends to dip in performance with their own SMT. At first, I was thinking the games that greatly benefited from SMT may be the games that do give Ryzen a performance boost with SMT on, but you can see that Intel benefits from Far Cry Primal, yet Ryzen has a huge hit to performance. Then again, almost the only thing that explains Ryzen matching the much higher clocked i5 in any titles might show SMT is helping. And Far Cry does seem to kind of be a weird one. We definitely need to look at more games to determine this. 
If it is true, though, I get the CCX issue and moving across the lower bandwidth infinity blanket, but I, I don't know. I guess we just ultimately have to wait and see how things go as far as Ryzen 5. The biggest thing I believe is how high it can overclock. The much higher clocks of Intel definitely tend to help, especially since, as the author noted, Intel can go even higher than the 4.8 GHz they had it at. Really though, we can't say for sure until we have more titles tested and the real Ryzen 5s are being benchmarked. With that said, these really shouldn't be very different, if at all, unless of course they change something we're unaware of, but it's doubtful. Either way, I think it all boils down to the possibility of optimization from developers that might be able to drastically change it by working properly with Ryzen CCX modules, as well as utilizing more cores. Who knows where things will go, though? AMD seems to think this is right where they should be, but it was noted the differences from better developer optimization. Basically, I'm not really wanting to form any opinions just yet, but it at least gives us an idea of what we can expect from Ryzen 5. So what do you think of the performance of Ryzen 5? Is it right where you want it to be? Are the two extra cores from the 1600X giving you hope for the future of more cores equals better in gaming? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, go ahead and click that round icon in the middle to subscribe. You can also check out my last video to the left or a suggested video to the right. And as always, have a great day.